Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I have a very exciting readathon announcement to share, as well as a few book recommendations for that readathon. This is going to be the Queer Romance Readathon taking place in June for Pride Month. <laughs> I am so excited to be finally announcing this now that everything's been kind of nailed down in terms of what is happening. June is Pride Month and I thought it would be really fun to do a readathon focusing on reading LGBTQ romance novels. This is going to be a bingo board style readathon, kind of similar to what I did last month with Tor.comathon if anybody joined in there. The Queer Romance Readathon will be taking place from June 13th to June 20th, 2022 with a live show on the night of June 20th. There is a bingo board and a group book and I have a whole bunch of amazing co-hosts who are joining me. Joining me as co-hosts for the Queer Romance Readathon are Audrey from Perpetual Pages, Tamika from Tamika's Library, Bear from Etu Brody, Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter, Alex from Pucks and Paperbacks, Izzy from Happy For Now, Ashley from Bookish Realm, Neeks, and Dylan from Dynamic Dylan. We are gonna have a full house for the live show. Thank you so much to all of my amazing co-hosts for agreeing to join in. There are gonna be reading sprints every day of the readathon. We have a schedule set up, so that'll be posted. I will post all of the information, graphics on schedules the same day I post this video. So check out the community tab on YouTube or my Instagram page. If you wanna check that out, the link is down below. If you wanna post about your TBR or the books that you read during the readathon, you can use the hashtag Queer Romance Readathon. And here is the bingo board. I am really excited about the prompts that we have. The goal for this is really to push people to get a little outside their comfort zone, read from all across the rainbow. I think sometimes we can focus on specific parts of it. We're also nudging you to read from Black, Indigenous, and Person of Color authors for this readathon, which I'm excited about, and to read more Own Voices books. You might notice that one of the prompts is to read a male-male romance by a gay author. There has historically been a trend in romance publishing where we've seen a lot of gay romances written by straight women, so I would like to encourage you all to go check out some of the amazing queer men who are also writing romance out there. If you are in need of recommendations for the readathon, don't worry, we've got you covered. I'm going to tell you about the group book and then I'm going to give you some recommendations for queer historical romances. And then I have two live streams coming before the end of May where I and guests will be giving you tons of recommendations for queer contemporary romances and queer sci-fi fantasy romances. So don't worry, we've got you covered. There will be tons of options to meet all of these different prompts. I want to reiterate what I said in a past readathon, which is that I like the bingo board style because I think Think it makes it easier to have a readathon be inclusive. So slow readers can participate, fast readers can participate. For those of you who are wanting specific rules around what counts and what doesn't count, I'll let you know I am pretty open to whatever you think. If you want to read things that are all strictly genre romance, you can do that. Or if you want to read things that have a heavy romantic plot to them but aren't technically part of the romance genre, you are welcome to do that as well. If you want to read a different book for each prompt, you're welcome to do that or you can use one book to cover multiple prompts. And in light of that, I specifically chose the group book so that you can get a bingo just by reading the group book. This is the main book we'll be discussing for the live show, but we'll talk about some of the other things that we read during the week as well. The group book for this readathon is Drag Me Up by RM Virtues. This is an indie published erotic romance. I know this is gonna be outside of some people's comfort zone. If this isn't your thing, you're welcome to read whatever works for you. But I have been wanting to read from Arm Virtues for quite a while and this seemed like a great opportunity. Drag Me Up is a contemporary erotic retelling of Hades and Persephone where Persephone is a black trans woman and our Hades is black, demisexual, and pansexual. So you're getting queer black love, a lot of really interesting representation. I have heard great things about this so far and I'm really excited to pick it up. On top of which Drag Me Up meets a whole bunch of prompts. I didn't even realize when I picked it how many prompts it was gonna meet until I started looking into it and then I was like oh wow. So yeah you can pretty easily get a bingo just by reading this if you want to. Here are the prompts that this meets. Asexual representation, our Hades is demisexual which is on the ace spectrum. Trans author, black author, Latinx author, indigenous author, 
the author Arm Virtues is a trans, black, indigenous, Mexican man, so meets all of those. It is an erotic romance, an indie author, a disabled author, queer black love, and you can also count this as a bisexual rep. Our Hades is pansexual, and I think of pansexual as a subcategory of bisexuality. So yeah, Drag Me Up is going to meet a whole bunch of these prompts if you decide to read it. I'll tell you a little bit more based on the back. They say he's a myth, and Hades prefers it that way. He may do all the work, and Zeus may get all the credit, but at least it allows Hades to preserve the one thing he truly cares to have, his solitude. The mere mention of the Wraith of Chaos Falls is enough to keep order, and he is rarely forced to leave the shadows of Casino Asphodel. She belongs in the spotlight, and Persephone clawed her way out of Demeter's shadow to reach it. Now she's lead in Calliope's Cirque production, but not without great cost, and there is not enough money in the world to pay off the debt accrued for the simple mistake of trusting Zeus though it's easier to ignore the bars when she still has room to fly. Landing a residency at the legendary Casino Asphodel is everything she trained for. Meeting a man she'd been convinced didn't exist? She could never be prepared for that. Hades isn't prepared for her either, but it's soon evident they're a force when together. He gives her a soft place to land and she makes him want to reach for the stars. But when Zeus ups the stakes, they must be willing to go all in, even if it means coming down from the sky or stepping into the light. Note that this book is an erotic romance and it does contain explicit sexual scenes, including some BDSM elements. There are other content warnings as well, so check out Goodreads if you need any of those. But I'm really excited to read this. I've heard great things about it and uh, yeah, should be fun. That said, if this is not your cup of tea, you are still more than welcome to join us for the readathon. You can tune in for the discussion during the live show, whether or not you've read the final book, and we'll talk about all of the other books that we've read as well. With that said, one of the prompts is to read a queer historical romance, and in this video I wanted to give you a few recommendations if you are looking to meet that prompt and find some good historical options. Like I said, later this month there will be live streams coming where you're going to get a ton of recommendations of contemporary and sci-fi fantasy romances that you can read for the readathon, but today we're just going to go with my smallest list, which is historicals. Thankfully, we're starting to see more and more historicals. The ones that I'm going to be recommending are books that I have either personally read or are currently on my TBR. And for each book, I will let you know all of the prompts that it fills. And good timing, because two of these I've actually read in the first part of May, so I haven't even talked about them in any kind of a wrap up on this channel yet. So sneak preview of things to come. The Perks of Loving a Wallflower by Erica Ridley is a fantastic historical romance. I will say this cover is very misleading because this is not what either of the main characters look like. Philippa York is a Regency nerd, aka a blue stocking, and she is a plus size blonde bombshell. And her love interest is Thomasina, aka Tom, master of disguise, dapper, mask leaning, possibly non-binary character. So um, yeah, this is definitely misleading. I love Tom. She does use she, her pronouns in the book, but is clearly more on the gender queer side. And in fact, the two initially meet when Tom dresses up as a young nobleman to have a way to talk to her crush because she'd been crushing from afar for like a year on Philippa. One thing in case you were worried is that they do very quickly. There is a revelation of her real identity. So while she continues with that disguise, to other people within their relationship, they both know who she is. So I thought that was handled really well. This was really cute, really sweet. It's definitely a slow burn. There's a little bit of steam close to the end, but it takes a while to get there. I, I just really, really love this. In addition to meeting the prompt for a queer historical romance, this also meets the following prompts. Black author and female female romance. Next up is the other book that I read so far this month and loved. I thought this was amazing and handled with so much care. This is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. So I had read Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall and really loved it. That one is more of a rom-com and so if you're going into this expecting that just know that it's a very different tone. There are a few funnier moments in here but overall it's tonally quite different and much more serious. This is a historical romance featuring a trans heroine who is reconnecting with her childhood best friend who thought that she had died in the war. 
This is the sort of thing that there could easily be a lot of pitfalls in, but it was clearly handled with so much care and I loved it. It's another one that's definitely a slow burn romance. There does end up being a couple of steamier scenes towards the end, which I was just really impressed with how that was handled. They are steamy, but also do a lot of deep emotional work for the characters and their relationship with each other and never feel lurid or voyeuristic in any sort of way. So I thought that was really fantastic. Overall, I thought this was a really beautiful love story it was really moving and yeah definitely one to check out. This comes out in May so it will be a brand new release if you decide to pick it up for the readathon. I did listen to this on audio. I had an audio review copy from Libra FM and it was fantastic. In addition to meeting the prompt for being a queer historical romance, A Lady for a Duke also meets the following prompts. 2022 release and disability representation. Our hero is disabled due to a leg injury from the war. My next two recommendations are in the same series from the same author, and I love both of them. The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite and The Care and Feeding of Waspish Widows by Olivia Waite. Both of these are historical sapphic romances and I just really love them. I, this is probably my favorite of the series. This one I think is a little bit too long, but I still love it, especially because this one features middle-aged women, one of whom is a widow and them finding love. It's very much a slow burn kind of friends to lovers. This one features a slightly older widow and a younger woman who is an astronomer and mathematician. And I just, I really, really love both of these books. They are interesting historically. They are steamy. I was fully bought into both of the relationships. If you haven't tried them, highly recommend. For Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics, in addition to meeting the prompt for being a queer historical romance, it also meets the following prompts. Female, female romance and bisexual representation or author. The Care and Feeding of Waspish Widows, also meets the prompts for female female romance and bisexual representation or author. My next recommendation is a pretty short novella. This wouldn't take long to read at all and it's excellent. This is That Could Be Enough by Alyssa Cole. It is a historical romance novella between two black women in post-revolutionary war America. I really like this. It's steamy, it's sweet, it's very short and quick to get through. And in addition to meeting the prompt for being a queer historical romance, it also meets the following prompts. Female female romance, black author, queer black love, bisexual representation or author, indie author, this is one of Alyssa Cole's indie published works, and novella or short story. So this one would meet a bunch of prompts. It's quick and it's great. My final recommendation is a novella that I haven't read yet, but this might actually go on my TBR for the readathon. This is Mrs. Martin's Incomparable Adventure by Courtney Milan. It is a historical romance with seniors, which I kind of love. This is another one with an older woman who is a widow and has like grandchildren finding love. I love Courtney Milan. I love the premise of this. I've been wanting to pick it up for a while, so I'm probably going to read it for the readathon. But if you've been looking for that kind of representation, definitely go and check this out. In addition to meeting the prompt for being a queer historical romance, it meets the following prompts short story or novella, female female romance, bisexual representation or author, and Asian author. Courtney Milan is part Chinese. So those are all of my recommendations for historical romances. Don't worry when I get to my contemporary and sci-fi fantasy. I will have books that will meet all of the different prompts on the bingo board. I know I didn't cover all of them here. I feel like there's a little bit less in terms of historical or maybe I just need to read more of them. But one other quick note I'll make before I wrap this up in case there are questions about this. You might notice that one of the prompts is to read something from the Karina Adores line. That's a new line of books that started in the last couple of years from Harlequin romances. They've got a bunch in there, some that you'd probably recognize, but this is one of their recent ones. Book Boyfriend by Chris Ripper. It has the symbol if you haven't seen them before, but they're all these trade paperback contemporary tropey queer romances. And I have a whole bunch of them that I've been meaning to read. And so this seemed like a great opportunity. So I, that is one of the prompts for the readathon. There will be more recommendations for that coming in the contemporary romance recommendation 
live stream. So stay tuned for that. I am so excited for this readathon. I hope you are too. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below if you're planning on joining us. I think it's going to be really fun. There's going to be reading sprints, lots of great book recommendations leading up to it, and just a really fun way of celebrating Pride Month. Again, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're planning on participating. If you have any recommendations for good queer historical romances to read for the readathon, leave them down below. If people are looking for those, I would love to hear from you. If you guys like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.